headed out for the next little adventure. As you can see, we're just now leaving the Salt Lake City Valley. And just some fun facts, that was the copper mine. And then over here, you got the Geneva Rock, rock Pit. This is what we call the point of the mountain here in Salt Lake. And it's always windy here, uh, which causes a ton of dust from the rock pit, but I let that crash. But yeah, Martin and I took all morning to figure out how to put the Rambo bikes in this truck. They wouldn't fit with the truck bed on, so we got the, the bike ramp that BMAC uses. We got the Rambo bikes, we got two of them. We're going in on a, this is a five day trip, but two days are basically driving. And we're going shed hunting, but I'm backpacking in for an overnight or so. I think with some work, we can find some elk sheds. This is a huge country that I've never been to. Kind of e-scouted it online, Google Earth and Onyx Maps. So I'm excited, it's gonna be a fun adventure, but we have a long drive down and uh, we're gonna stay in a hotel tonight that we'll, we'll be on the mountain tomorrow. So just so you guys don't have to watch all the boring stuff, we'll kind of fast forward to when we get to down there and get to the good stuff, but welcome to a new video. Let's have some fun. We made it guys, holy crap, that was a long journey, but we're here to where we're gonna unload the Rambo bikes. Can't take it any further, just because so many down trees and stuff, that's actually why we brought these. So we're gonna load up the backpacks, hop on the bikes, bomb in there as far as we can. Like I said, fingers crossed for some elk sheds. Good news, so Martin spotted his very first coos deer ever. I wasn't sure if coos deer live at this elevation or where we're going, but since we saw that doe, I have a good feeling that we'll probably find some coos deer sheds if we're lucky, so it's going to be a fun trip. Got some food, cold food in there. The Vortex Optics. We got plenty of water and uh, I have some iodine tablets down there. There should be some springs or at least some little creeks to filter water. And then I got my lid. This is full of food, so I'm going to pack up and head out. All right, guys. Hopping on the bikes. You got 100% battery. Should get us there and back pretty easily. A little bit of a ride on this dirt road and be money. <laughs> Backpack's feeling a little heavy, but that's typical of me. I always pack way more than I need. This is gonna be pretty fun, guys. Ride in on the mountain bikes and uh, hike in probably probably three to five miles depending on where we really want to camp and then two nights down here looking for sheds it's like the dream trip so here we go get some speed okay guys here we go we got off the bikes and now it's time to start walking what we're gonna do is we're starting high up in elevation and we're actually gonna bomb into this canyon, picking two different Razorback ridges to go down. Martin will take the one further south. I'll take this one and then we'll just kind of check for tracks on the backbones. They seem to be really good travel routes and bedding areas and you can really get an idea of if there's a lot of track or not on the ridge tops. And uh, with that, we can kind of glass back and forth to each other's ridges. I'll probably glass a big set right in front of Martin. <laughs> That's my guess. Okay. But uh, we're going to split up right here and then actually just so we can cover more country in this ridge. And then we're going to meet up down below where we can ditch the backpacks and stuff. So good luck. Good luck. Man. Stay on the radio. Don't go too far. Here we go, guys. Been waiting all spring for this. Super excited and have no clue what to expect. So we're just gonna go down there and try it. I had to get it off my mind, so the only way to do that is to come do it. Well, this canyon is pretty dang rough, steep, rocky and thick brush. Probably some coos deer in here too, but you can see all these elk dropping. So the elk definitely don't mind the rough terrain. They like, you know, coming to these big canyons where they're secluded and stuff, but it is pretty nasty. We're just headed down to the bottom down that way and we'll set up camp. All right, we just broke the ice. It's a shed. 
but I have no idea what it's a shed to. Laying in this bottom. Oh, I think that's a brown. Sweet. Nice. Brown, little six point. This has a little back in there. But other than that, pretty good mass to him. Laying in this ditch bottom. Looks like he probably came right off this trail and then dumped it right there. Pick up here. This, oh yeah, super, look how dark they are on the bottom there. Pretty dang stinking big burr for how, uh, for that he's just a six point, like a smaller six, but good dense weight from here down. That's awesome. Hopefully that's a good sign we both start getting into him. Martin with the icebreaker, start the trip. Ooh, dang, it's dark, huh? Dark. He's Ooh. not like giant, but he's. Oh, man. Dark. That's a mature bull. You know, the problem just because of the drought is going to be the back end. So I don't doubt that we find some good mature bulls with like great fronts. But we're going to, that's going to probably be the common theme of the trip if we get into them. Yeah. But that's cool, though, man. I mean, is that nice and dense? Yeah, he's pretty. Dude, Wait, dude, that's cool. Well, we're gonna maybe try to find a spot to ditch the pack so we can work some of this high stuff before we really bomb down low, but it's a great start. Check out this country. This is like a glasser's paradise. I'm sure enjoying myself even though I haven't glassed anything. But uh, Martin is up the ridge from me and he is dropping down into this little ditch right here because he glassed a white shed. So he's gonna head down there, pick that up, and then we'll kind of make a loop back to the backpacks as we ditch the backpacks there for a second and I think we'll go get the packs and make a camp somewhere down below us. But these big steep ridges, they seem to be producing and we haven't even really made it down to what we think is the good stuff, so. Cruising up this hillside, we don't have our packs. Just, uh, we just did like a little quick loop, big loop, but we're cruising ground quick. The crazy thing is, is nothing looks the same when you get over here as it did when you were glassing. But I did confirm what I glassed up was a shed all I could see was those back little forks and look at this another side laying right there that one's a right and this one's a left but I don't think it's a match I think these are two different bowls laying here that one looks like a last year's this one looks chalk and old so two different bowls that's a nice six point this looks like a five maybe a small six all right here's kind of a look from looking down nice bowl just stubby as could be on the g1 and 2 though that's crazy probably a three-year-old antler actually you could see him starting to crack on this side this side still decent shape but i'm pretty sure they're different bowls because he's not goofy on his g1s you the one eating all the antlers up here? Huh? <laughs> he just froze once he saw me. <laughs> Finally, I decided to stay up here while Martin, he's going down to get that one. I just glassed two sheds and from what I can tell, they actually both look white and they both look like left sides. One is just two points. It's uh, his first two eye guards and it's busted completely off on the main beam. And the other one is in a bush and I can just tell it's nice. You know, at least a good solid white, a really good third I, from what I can see. So this country is cool because you can glass it. And now that we have two there for sure, Martin's got the one. I'm just going to sit right here and try to find some more. But yeah, on the board, baby. With confidence. I could say this with confidence. We are killing it today. We are already up to six sheds for sure confirmed. Martin went to pick up his. It was a set. He went to check on something he glassed. It sounds like it's two more sheds which uh, most likely is a set. So my two are right here. I just got a glimpse of the, the bigger one, so we're gonna go check that out first. It's just kind of across this little ditch right here. Heck yeah, it's a good one. Just like I thought. Whew. Nice hard white, straight six. Oh, busted G1. Oh, heck yeah, that's from last year. Oh man, that feels good. The other side's right above me, but too bad. It's just a busted G2. I think it was pretty tough to see. I'd say the angle I had 
was pretty much right there. You can kind of see the third in the Royal. Couldn't really tell if it was a five or a six, but happy to see that it's a nice solid six point. Stuffed up in there pretty good. All right, not a bad bull at all. Definitely last year's. Look how heavy it is right there. That's pretty cool. He's all palmated right there. It is royal. Still nice and brown on this inside. So great bull, hard white. I think this is the first hard white we found. Martin's got a brown and then some uh, chalks from kind of a variety of different years, but that's pretty sweet, right? It's a nice one. Look at the burr on that. Nothing giant, but nice and solid. Look, so he had like the candle. He had like some texture going on, like we call it the candle drop. When I see stuff like that, it looks like it's melting downward, but just a nice bull. Welcome back. It's a nice one. He's solid, huh? Dark one. Yeah, on the inside you'd think it's brown still. Yeah, mine are. I got one that's probably two and then the other three are chalk. Yeah. Both, there was two side by sides. Really? They're both one's sets? One's set and the other one's two different animals. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. This this one had shed by another one, but it was like eight years old. It was just two points and chewed up, you yeah. know, just a chalky base. The other, that one I found, he had big fronts and then everything else was just chewed. Yeah, they bummer. Just eight, ten year old antler. You wanna set those down and chill out for a minute? Yeah. Arms fell asleep up here like this. <laughs> <laughs> well our first push is over with and we're gonna try to find a camp spot. This was kinda of one option right here. If you want Martin, I can go from this tree to that tree from a hammock at an angle. And any of this we can dig out all the cow crap. That'll work? Yeah. So we'll we'll clean it all up, get the cow crap out of here and uh, post up. Just right. A little higher for a chair, but pretty good for a bed. I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit, but here's camp. Martin's been doing work, and he's got his shed stack already. <laughs> Not bad for first four or five hours of the hike. Yeah. He's got his food all organized. We're gonna get stuff organized, ready to go, and we're gonna go out on another hike. So, welcome to Shed Camp 2019. All right guys, for this amount of water, I'm using iodine tablets. I'm gonna need to put two of them in there. It's gotta sit for 30 minutes before you can drink it. So I just downed a ton of uh, water in Mountain Ops, so I'll be good for a while. By the time I'm thirsty again, I'll need them. So two of those, simple enough. That's why I take these backpacking, they're so easy. Not not as big as like a filter system and stuff like that so we'll let that settle in and it's good to know we have cold water here check this out guys i think i just found my first brown coos deer shed ever and it's a nice little one. Oh man it is brown for sure yes this calls for taking the backpack off for a celebration i shot my first coos deer buck this last november just had a blast hunting them. Always wanted to pick up their sheds. I've picked up a couple random whites uh, while hunting and looking for elk sheds. But that is my first brown coos deer shed. They're just a little like miniature whitetail, typically living in the desert landscape. And we knew that there was some in here and we figured we would find some sheds. Okay guys, we are gonna document the official pickup. Just a cute little guy. Looks like he broke his eye guard, but would have been a, you know, four points or eight point or three point, whatever you want to call it. But look at that. I'm stoked. Just to look over and see a brown coos deer shed got me so excited walking through these thick timbers. So this is the first coos deer shed of the trip and it's fresh. So sweet. Finally, finally got a brown on this trip and it's an elk shed. Yes! Oh man! Whew. Oh man, it's heavy! 
It is heavy, guys, with a weird burr, I think. Holy smokes, we have a brown, finally. It's a good one, too. I found that coos deer shed just over the rise, and I did three zigzags looking for more, and lucked into a brown elk shed, and it is a big, heavy beast. Holy cow, guys. Sweet. <laughs> Look at that stubby sucker. It almost doesn't seem right. It would have sat like that and that's a little abnormal. Could could happen that way, I guess, because the burr, you know, the burr really does just look uh, very normal. So nice, heavy, heavy six point. I mean, look at that stub up there. His royal just balled off and you can see it's broke right there, but it was super massive. and. Tons of mass on this bull. Pretty sweet. I'm stoked, guys. Let's go find some more of these. That's so rad. Struggling. There it goes. Uh-oh. <laughs> what is that? Big brown, guys. I was standing right here when I saw it. And I was just cruising up through this opening thinking, if this is where a bull is going to shed, it's right through this open patch. Great cover. Great feed. Sure enough, big brown. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. The cool thing about this is camp is like 20 minutes that way. So, I'm not going to buzz around or zigzag or anything. I might just take a straight line to camp. Who knows? Could find it, but man, I'm stoked. How about that brown sitting in the tree? So cool. Right where you think one would shed. And there you go. Yeah. Woo. Yes, I would pick up solid browns like that all day, every day. Definitely one of the better days I've had this year for browns. Well, it's only found two browns, one solid white, but these things up here are so dark and so pretty. And you can see it's hardly even sun bleached because they start out so dang dark up here. But we'll get that on the backpack and We'll uh, surprise Martin back to camp. Well, I think I just matched up my other side to that big brown early, from earlier. Coming through my last line back to camp. And I could see a nice dark right side, which is what I was looking for. Oh, looks like a different bull. He's not nearly as heavy. Brown six point, but um, not as big as the other one I found. So that's two brown elk sheds now um, that we need to match up. Eric also has a brown elk shed. He hasn't matched up. Dang, I really thought that was going to be the match. <sighs> Making my line to camp. <laughs> Spotted a floater. Brownie up here. Wow. How cool. Not the match. Another bull up here. Finally found two browns on one hill. That thing is about as dark as they get still. Look at that G1. Heck yeah, another mature bull, man. I am pumped. Tomorrow, I'm gonna have to zigzag this ridge and really, really work it. Just clean it up, you know? It's gotta be the matches to these and probably more. Cool shot, huh? <laughs> Let's pick it up. Yes! Give me browns. Yes. Dang, guys, this is just day one. We have a full day tomorrow and a half day the next day. How awesome is this? Heck yes. Man, I can't wait to get back to camp to show you guys the whole haul of the day. Look at the burr on that and that floater G1. Heck yeah. Right oh. oh at any <laughs> moment you can find a shed up here. Look at that slicker. That thing's bad. Look at the G1 on it. Dude. It's even better. Check out the load. Just scooped two browns on the way up here, dude. Really? Uh-huh. Dang. On the south side of our camp. Dude, that's where I was pounding. Really? Yeah. That's where I found this one. 
this one was, I was like, man, this is too perfect. You know, like it just, everything about this spot is great. Found that one. Just a pretty six, you know, kind of like that nice burr. This is the chalkster I decided to pack, make our photos look good for Instagram. Guys, oh man, it feels good to be back camp. I'm checking the Onyx map and uh, you guys need to see the dang lines on this thing. We did 10 hours and 15 minutes of hiking, 9.39 miles, so averaged about a mile per hour. And in this terrain where you're just going up and down and we actually did spend a lot of time glassing, that's pretty good. We covered a lot of ground. And we learned a lot like think about how much we learned on the elevation where browns are this year where where they had shed in other years so total win for day one not even a full day tomorrow is a full day don't have a game plan yet but me and martin will sit around the campfire and probably make one but we're gonna build a fire and uh eat some dinner you guys join us it'll be fun there's a couple ways to build fires you know a lot of people like the teepee or the cabin let's do the cabin that's kind of a cabin we're in a hurry not much daylight left we want to get get some food on a shed hunt i did with my buddies on horseback i showed you guys a fire starter product so this is going to be a product we're going to sell on our website pyro putty uh, the hush fireball starter what it is is that right there will allow us to light that on fire and it will burn for i mean this chunk that size will burn for quite a while and it just gives you a ton of time to build a fire. So this is great uh, for summer. The I think the orange one is summer. The blue one is winter. The blue one is just more water resistant and better for cold temperatures. So watch how this lights. And watch how it almost burns like a candle. Which, look how quick it lights. And then that gives you time to just build a quick fire. So the Hush Fireball Pyro Putty fire starter on the website gethushin.com it is awesome to just throw in your backpack doesn't weigh hardly anything and there's also smaller sizes for uh, you guys that actually are backpacking but put one in your backpack for emergencies plus it's just a ton of fun if you like fire i mean i think everybody has fun with fire so let's get dinner going and and build this thing up but look how that lights so nicely and allows you to build a good fire here we go, it is dinner time. Let me show you what we got. Pepper jack cheese of five beef bratwurst. So we're gonna throw those on the fire and eat those for tonight. And I have definitely have plenty of food for myself. So there will be no shortage of getting hungry out here. Got five of them, they have to be eaten tonight. So you have to help me. Oh wait, what? Our yes. fire's looking a little poverty there. Look at that. Oh, look at the angle of that. Just flame, flame grill. If we can do more than that tomorrow, and then, you know, just at that point, we're really going to have all we can pack out anyways, but maybe find a few more the next day. It's kind of sift through like the best. Yeah, I, I guess what, 30 to 35. And what did we say we're at with the coos deer shed? Six. 15, 16. Yeah, we're doing good. Look at that hot dog's looking delicious. That's the final product. That is a beef brat wrapped in pepper jack cheese. And like I said, this food will probably not last long out here, so I'm gonna grub as much of it as I can tonight. What's your predictions for tomorrow? Are we gonna find them? Man, with already 15 or 16 today, I think for sure. Plus, we kinda know based off of your little line on the way out mm -hmm. getting into them and only finding two singles so there's got to be some more down in there we're gonna eat dinner guys and call it a night but i just want to say thanks for watching the video we will have two more videos uh from this trip day two and day three so we've got two nights actually and then we have to hike out of here and then rambo bike out of here but today was a great day hope you guys enjoyed all the shed hunts and and more action on this video than I kind of have been lately, but we'll, we'll get the video cut and edited for tomorrow, and we'll see you guys on tomorrow's video. Make sure you guys subscribe, and thanks again for watching.